Hi everyone, Rachel Weber here again on the 2016 Twin Cities Film Fest red carpet here at the shops at West End in St. Louis Park. I am here with Christine and Derek Hallquist of Denial. And before I ask you guys questions, I just wanted you to notice that this line over here are all in line for Denial. This is, uh, these are the people hoping that someone else doesn't show up. <laughs> they were super excited about it here. Um, so to start off, Let's just let's just give a quick synopsis of what the film is about. I'll start with you. Yes, uh, the film Denial really dives into the sort of the psychology of denial and what that's like for humans. And you know, it began very much an inside man job about my father's job as a CEO at an electric company. You know, she would debunk all these things that I thought were true. I thought electricity was clean and good for, you know, fine for the environment. I was excited about electric transportation, but she really could show me, literally take me places and show me that, no, this is not true. We have a lot of work to do. The environment is suffering and electricity is really in the middle of it. And that's gotta be a major thing that we work on as, you know, not just in the United States, but as a world, so. That, 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 that really, you know, was the center point of the film until halfway into filming, you know, four years deep into that subject, Christine Dad came out privately to, to us that she had always identified as a woman and that that's who she was and that's who she wanted to be. So it was a little difficult, but it also is very similar to the big problem of electricity and not wanting to know about it, let's keep it quiet, everything's fine, you know, denial. So it was difficult, but the family agreed and I was at first uncomfortable being on camera, but I became part of the movie as well and it was about our family struggle. So you, you really get to see you know, up close in very personal struggle of a family in this backdrop of the struggle of the, you know, the nation and the world with climate change and energy. So you said that happened about four years in. How long then, I'm gonna take this tangent for a minute, how long did, um, how long was the process from beginning to end? Well, that's, a, that's actually an interesting question because the first sort of filming was actually when I was a teenager in high school. I would actually go to work and, and see, you know, uh, substation upgrades, all these nerdy things that people wouldn't be into, but I had just sort of discovered the camera as a kid and was really interested in exploring the world through the, you know, through the lens. So that was, you know, one of my early subjects. You know, it kind of ended up on a shelf after high school, but, you know, then as an adult, about eight years ago, you know, I was living in Los Angeles and very excited about electric transportation. And we would have debates and I realized, you know, maybe I should make a movie about this. I haven't seen a documentary that, you know, truly goes inside the world of, you know, the electric grid and tells us the truth. Like, you know, from a perspective of actually someone working in the energy industry, so. I'll go off of what you just said, which was the word perspective. So when I was reading about the film, I will admit, when it sort of showed me the two stories going on, I thought, what do these, what do these have in common? How does this, how does this mesh into one film? And the word really is perspective. And we talked about this a little bit beforehand, so I'll give this one to you. How do these stories mesh, and and how does perspective play a piece in this film? You know, uh, there's there's. Th one of the things people want to do is they want to have a, a right and a wrong answer. It's, you know, I call it the binary thinking. It's either a one or a zero, or it's right and wrong. It's very hard for people to be in the middle and understand it's complex. And of course, the energy business is highly complex. And dealing with climate change, there are no magic bullets. There are no ma aren't any magic solutions. It's gonna take a lot of hard work, a lot of hard engineering, a lot of the, the things that need to get done. And 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 we can be successful if we if we do the work, but it's going to take a long time. Well, the gender issue is exactly the same when you think about it. Am I male or am I female? You know, people want us all to be male or females. This in between part is hard for people to handle, and it's such a big issue that all I wanted to do was deny it. I was going to take this secret to my grave, but then when I reached my late 40s, 
I have two other children, we had these great relationships. They did not know my truth. And I began to feel so guilty that I was willing to give up everything, you know, my national leadership role in energy for the truth. I truly believe at that point I would be homeless, I would lose my family, and I would lose everything, but the truth was more important. You were afraid of those things if you revealed it. That, that's what you were afraid of as you, uh, as you came upon that decision. So, and you said it was your kids that, that really, you were like, I can't take this to my grave because then they won't know and they deserve to know. So what was it like after things were revealed? You're still in the middle of filming. Um, how, does that, how does that change the family dynamic for a short or long while? I would say it blew up the family dynamic. Okay. It Great. definitely... Great. Yeah. No, there's no gray here. This, this was not gray. It blew up. Okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of arguments and discussions of, with, within the family that didn't actually make the final cut. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of material showing that, you know, it was a mess in the beginning, a disaster. And that's the thing is that the longer the lie goes, the bigger mess it's gonna be when you deal with it. You know, and that, that's an, another good crossover from the personal to the big picture. With climate change, it's like, it's, it's exponentially getting worse. So the longer we keep pushing away from it, the harder it's going to be and it's going to be very hard people you know sometimes i hear environmentalists sort of it seems like they're sugarcoating it a little bit you know my funny enough my stepfather my or my stepfather-in-law my wife's stepfather is a actual is a, a director at the national science foundation and and has um one of the only planes in the world that collects atmospheric data at a low altitude. So I actually go to Alaska with him as well, and it's, you know, another father figure sort of showing me how bad things are. And uh, so it's just, you know, you want to say that the truth, you know, is easy and, and, and that's how you have to, to live, like live honestly. Um, but it's not easy, but it's important because it does get easier. Now our family's a lot closer. We've figured out our paths and how to be close again, and it's and it's truthful. So there's no you're not carrying any baggage anymore. It's like it's it's really a wonderful thing, and it's it's actually almost impossible to describe what it's like to have something this public now. Sure, sure. You're like you really don't even care. You don't even know. Uh, well, they must know. If they don't know, oh well. Yeah, exactly. So. That is wonderful. Thank you for sharing both stories with us. We're so honored to have you here at the Twin Cities Film Fest. Um, enjoy your showing. Enjoy your showing that has a waiting line. That's wonderful. Thank you guys. Join us later.